Today we're going to see this, uh, the different kinds of controls that exist and what each one does. And the, um, we're going to see how we implement the control systems on the physical systems that we already have. So in here we have, a, um, as you can see on the screen in here, some magician in there. We're going to do our magic here <laughs> to understand what control systems are about. So let's move down. And here we have um, control systems as a whole. And I entitled like computer design of feedback control systems, meaning that we are going to be using our tools, software tools to do this. Uh, you have two kinds of control systems. That's the first sort of easy classification. Ones are called open loop controls and the other ones are called closed loop controls. Okay, so we're going to see examples of each one of those. Here's the basic concepts. We, of course, we would like to use our software to design. And what is a control system? What does it actually do? The purpose is to adjust or to regulate the flow of energy in some way that you want. You want, let's say, the temperature of this room to be 68 degrees well you set the thermostat to 68 degrees and what you have done is adjust the flow of, of heat you know energy in the form of heat to that temperature and uh, how do you control it that is uh, what we're going to be learning um, closed loop control uses measurements so that you can modify the output depending on what you measure best example the cruise control of your car you set it to 65 and if you're not doing 65 the car would automatically would accelerate a little bit or would it slow down this is a this is a closed loop control system because it it has a sensor that tells the controller how fast you're going and depending on what you're doing, it adjusts either up or down. The open loop control system does not use feedback. It adjusts the flow of energy on a schedule. For example, typical control system, Christmas lights. You know, they turn on at 7 in the evening and turn off in, you know, wherever you set up that timer. The um, irrigation systems, the water in your lawn, it has a little clock in there where you set up how long the water will be on. Also the, um, the ovens, for example, you set it up for a timer, right? So that the turkey is well done or have done in three and a half hours. Or if you <coughs> wanna heat something, you know, of course the Examples of this are also the uh, uh, different kinds of ovens that we have, even microwaves and other things like that. So just to give you an idea. What is automatic control? Automatic control acts without the ISAD intervention and it requires a system that will require an operation. So it is. Uh, it can be either closed loop or open loop, of course, because um, for example, the new cars, the newer cars have a setting where depending on how dark it is, automatically the lights come on, right? So it's an automatic system. And um, you have many, many things that work like this. Um, we, as you have seen be previously in this class, we do a lot of things by building computer models of real life, of real things. So what we do is the, um, to simulate how the system is going to behave. And of course, we would like our model to be as close to reality as possible. And depending on what it does, 
we will adjust accordingly to uh, do the calculations. This is perhaps the most important picture that you uh, that you need to learn um, because it shows all the possible components of a control system. What is interesting here is that in the um, in this situation here, you have um, the control system, I mean the physical system here. This is the, this GP is the physical system. In control systems, they also are, we know it as plant, the plant, whenever you hear about the plant, it means that you are talking about the system that you want to control, okay? Then <coughs> you have all these other components we're going to go through, okay? Uh, you have a, an output, obviously, from the plant. That is the <coughs> control output, the CS. But at the very beginning, at the beginning here, you have the the input command. In other words, this is you going to that setting and setting the temperature, the uh, what you want, or uh, having the vehicle adjust to the specific speed that you have set it up. Okay. So after you do the measurement, that measurement signal goes through this so-called feedback element which could be like for example this box could transform the rpm that you measure from a motor here into a voltage here and your um, your setting here will produce a set voltage in here that voltage, this uh, voltage, or you could call it the reference voltage in here, would be compared to the one that you get from the system. And then the difference of this will produce an error. This is the error signal here. And what will happen is, after this, this obviously is a voltage, right? This has a um, control logic element that analyzes this error. And then um, with this, depending on what the error is, you are going to put in here the different control systems. See where it says final control right here? Okay, and then depending on what the error is, you already process that. The controller here is going to take an action to modify your system. But the problem is that we have to accommodate the fact that despite the fact that the control system tells the plant what to do, in the case of the temperature, for example, somebody opens the door or if you um, are controlling the temperature inside your refrigerator, the fact that you open the door mess the temperature up. And that event is called a disturbance. So what happened is that this, this again, the disturbance in here is um, acts on your system. <coughs> And what the system ends up getting us a, in the form of a control signal is the difference between what the control wants it to do and this disturbance signal. And so you see, you might not get the total control that you want, and this output is going to be messed up. But it takes another measurement, and it goes through the same cycle takes the measurement, goes through the cycle, overcomes this, and keeps going until it adjusts adjust the, um, 
the upward the way it's supposed to be. Granted that, you know, with this disturbance in here, we don't know if the disturbance is like constant or if it is just like somebody opened the door and then closed it later. Obviously, you want to reduce this to zero. Two things you want to reduce to zero. This disturbance, but also this error. That's the whole objective in here. So, in all chapters, uh, you know, two and three, um, up and until now, we uh, study this, our system. Now, we are going to mainly be concentrated over here on this ones because they, um, that's, 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 that's where the most important part is. So, and here we have this um, response. Let's say that if you put uh, an input in here to test and you want the response in here, If the response is a curve like this, you have the um, the time for the maximum is called the peak time, and this w is going to be the uh, the signal as as it would settle down. But you have some sort of a band in here before it the system one gets uh, settled but you see if your objective was that the system would operate on this line and the system would settle over here then you have produced what is called the steady state error <coughs> you see and that's what chapter 7 deals with it you know, with the steady state error but the point here is that no matter what you do, something uh, you will have to adjust. Either the system doesn't quite correct the error or the system shoots up too high or too low or it is too fast or too slow. So you see, there's all these variables that now we need to worry about to say what the, what the system will do with the control. And our objective, like I said, would be to reduce the disturbances here, but also to reduce the error. But, you know, how are we gonna do this if I'm already telling you that in some systems we have the state state error? Well, that is where the different kinds of controls come into picture. So we would like to minimize the steady state error. We want to minimize the settling time and to achieve other transit specifications such as minimizing the overshoot. Do you see what I mean here? So in general, if we put like a test signal, like a step input, and we see all these things in here, we can say, I want to minimize the steady state error I want to um, do better with the settling time, you know, it'll be shorter or maybe longer, depending on what you're doing, and other uh, specifications. Um, we have like a two position control, which is like on and off controller, is also called a bang bang controller. For example, temperature control is like you have a proportional control. Um, you, um, we will study proportional control when your plant is a first order system, meaning it doesn't have a second order differential equation. It's a simple system. Um, or if we have a second order system, then we will have to deal with that. So right now I'm just outlining the different kinds of controllers. The proportional control means I am going to <coughs> put a controller 
proportional to the error. So the more error, more control. The less error, less control. That's the idea, okay? So there's another type of controller called integral control and another one called derivative control. So right here in one slide, you have all these um, kinds of control systems and we need to go one by one, studying each one of these and what each one does. Um, so I will be giving you some examples of each one of these controls. For example, a two position control system. Like in here, you have the, the um, this is a, like a float valve, for example, um, the thermostat. So you have the, um, the control the, um, uh, depends on the, um, on a cycle like this, you know, it's either on, then, for example, the, the tank in the bathroom, you know, the toilet is typical in here. Th it needs to fill out a certain uh, amount and then the valve shuts off. Then it's used again, goes up and then goes down. So this is the, this is the kind of, um, uh, the kind of control, two position control. This uh, would be like on and off controller, for example, in here. So this is a liquid level controlling here, so you have a floating in the air. As you can see that um, it has a supply of water, and this valve in here either opens or closes. Okay, so in here what will happen is when it fills up, you say disconnect this, so the valve is going to be uh, uh, you know the solenoid will act this but if the um, if this goes down it closes the circuit so opens the valve and then lets the water in so how does it work if this is time and this is the um, the height of the uh, tank you know you have this curve to uh, fill it up like this, it will operate like this. But the, in reality, when you turn it on, it doesn't quite shut off automatically. It goes a little bit and then it goes this way. So they're always a bit off. And the idea is to reduce this uh, this error. So that's the kind of uh, controller which would be an, a liquid level control system. Bam bam control. This one operates either, uh, the ideal would be it's in here off and then it's on like that, right? But usually it doesn't work like that. It has a bit of a delay, a dead zone in here, and it works like this. Okay. This one is very familiar to you. Thanksgiving, we do our turkeys here. And to make it perfect, you have to have a certain time and the temperature, right? But we never think about from the engineering point of view what goes on and I'm gonna have you reflect a little bit on this. If this is the oven inside here and you have the heating element in here, that heating element has to have a control system, okay? But you see, when it, when it heats up, not only heats up inside, but also the walls. And if the walls are not isolated, I mean insulated, then you lose heat. And you, instead of concentrating on the oven, you are sending it outside. 
So ovens have very good insulation to keep the heat on, the, on there. And that's what this is. So how does it work in here? You have a, a place where you put the, you know, you put set the, the dial for what you want. And this, this power amplifier is the one that actually produces the voltage for the heating element. And also at the same time, depending on what the thermostat, the sensor does, this thing is going to shut it off. So this is the typical electrical temperature control. So in here you see um, you have, for example, the you you have a thermocoupling here. That thing has to produce a voltage. That we represent this with this kind of equation because it has to have a gain on the temperature, right? And then you have in here the voltage from this uh, potentiometer to uh, to either, you know to heat up this, and then um, you have this um, typical setup you know, with the power amplifier putting voltage for this and changing it depending on what the sensor does. And here in the temperature controller of this, if we reduce it, we need to begin working and reducing the control loss to, again, to equations, you know? Like in this, for example, in this case, if it is a heat transfer problem that has this kind of differential equation, do you notice it's dt dt? Uh, this one is a first order system because the derivative that controls the behavior of this oven is only first order equation. So <coughs> in this case, the, the control condition is that T2 should be constant. So if we look at the um, the heater, Q of the heater should be equal to the to the lost energy. So Q the steady state would be the difference in temperature divided by the resistance. In the case of the amplifier mm -hmm. is um, to provide the heat for the oven and also to compare the voltage coming from the sensor and coming from the dial that you set the temperature to. So the, um, the heater up with is going to be this um, QSS plus M, which would be the, um, the, the control, it's, it's uh, okay. So it depends on, um, on these values how strong the control system is for this oven. And here the temperature <coughs> controller, you have T2200 and outside 70 degrees. You also have a, um, a, the physical system equation and you have the, the loss of uh, the difference of the heat and the steady state. So these are the kind of things that we want to analyze, but now in more detail from the systems uh, block diagram point of view, here's what we can recognize. This is your system right there, okay? You measure the variable in here, temperature in here, gets transformed into a voltage that is compared to what you have originally set up, that comparison produces an <coughs> error. That error in this case is a proportional control. In other words, do you see this is a constant? The more error, the more control. 
and in here is the disturbance. So when you are designing a control system, um, like in my case, I will have to give you the conditions. What would we want the control system to do? Because what's happening here is your plant, this is your physical system, is being modified by this other block. If this is a, if between these two you have a transfer function, then the combination of the controller plus the system produces a different output, which is the one that you want for control system. Yeah? Um, you need to design based on the time constant, I mean how quick the system is, the damping ratio, meaning the, does this system have a component that dissipates energy and how much, and then we have to wor uh, worry about the natural frequency. Uh, the stability. Remember we talked about uh, if a system has the poles on the right hand side, system is unstable. If the poles are on the left hand side, the system is stable. Uh, how, how quickly can it respond and how accurate it is? All these things are from our basic concepts of what we want to do are the objectives of, of what on each problem and controls we need to decide. You can have this a, in a more practical way in here. If you have a position <coughs> control system, for example, in here. You see, let's say this is the, uh, the motor in here and you have a flywheel that is turning here. In this case, you see this little gear measures it, the position of this uh, flywheel. And this thing is gonna tell us where, where, where it is, what mm. the position is. If you feed back this to the amplifier here and also you have the the setup in here. You compare the two, and this device is going to command the DC motor to either increase the torque or decrease it. Do you see how it works? So your system being here is controlled by these two units here. So if you have the um, block diagrams of each one of these. You can see that what we have studied so far, this plant is the, um, the transfer function right here. This is, would be the feedback. Gets compared with the reference, produces an error, and goes through this amplifier and then that goes to this motor, which in fact is the control, the actual control system. Okay. I already talked to you about the disturbance and we, you know, we try to make it zero. And if that's the case, what you're seeing, if you, if we eliminate this, you have that the transfer function, which is this motor plus the system plus this logic that is an overall transfer function of the system so let's take a look the the second type of controllers the proportional control i said this is the more control you have the more area you have the more control in this case the feedback signal is proportional to the error signal so some, uh, the more error, the more control. So the control signal is a proportional constant 
multiply by the difference <coughs> in the set point and the current value. This is a, another way of saying error. Set point minus current value read error. So if you multiply the error times the proportional constant k, you will come up with the control signal. So if you have the DC motor in here, DC motor has a tachometer that measures the speed and position here, feeds back to the amplifier, which takes the difference between the value you set up and the actual value. And this error is corrected over here with this power amplifier and the DC motor. That is, that is how it works. It's pretty simple. All uh, you can see with the background that we have right now is a very small step to go from the transfer function of the system to the transfer function of a closed loop system, which is what you have in here. Sometimes if you um, don't have the um, the ability to just do proportional control. There are two others that do different things, like um, the integral control, for example, it reduces the error and tries to reduce it to zero. But it has a problem, it <coughs> oscillates too much. This one, Proportional control is the um, the one the we can put in here for this example using the motor, right? So you have the um, the the control system on the physical system with this proportional control. Let's try something a little more complex. You have in here the um, proportional control system. See? This is your system. This is the measure. You get your feedback in here. Compare it to the original. Produce the control system. <coughs> and you will end up with this kind of equation. So you you are obtaining the transfer function of the position with respect to the torque or the um, position here with respect to the uh, to this other input right here. You know that th by now everybody should have totally and in your mind the idea that a transfer function is a relationship between the output and one input of the system. And that's what we are seeing here. This would be a transfer function between that output and this, or between this output and this store. So that, that's how it works. So if you have the plant and the input is a step input, the step input uh, can be uh, simulated as 1 over s. If you put the input plus the transfer function and you try to, um, to find out what the response is, you're going to, to see something like this. And then... Uh, you can calculate what the value would be. Mm -hmm. So this is, we need to do some more exercise on this. In this case, for example, the change in the load torque, and you could model also as a unit step input in here, yeah. multiplied by the transfer function of the system and uh, we calculate the steady state there. This is the thing 
that is in chapter seven <coughs> that we need to review. Summary of proportional control. First order system, the output never reaches the desired value. The resistance is present, and although it can be made arbitrarily close by choosing the gain large enough, it is always with an error. So proportional control is very good, it's quick, but it leaves us with a steady state error. Um, as the output approaches the final value without oscillations, the, the time to reach this value is inversely proportional to the control. So uh, meaning the more control, the faster it's going to get there. So the output deviation due to the disturbance of the steady state is inversely proportional to the gain. And the error will always be present even in the absence of damping. So this is a problem. We have a one set of control. We need, we need to learn how to deal with this. Um, I'm going to, we're going to study the other kinds, the integral control and all that stuff. So I am going to stop here and we'll deal in our next <coughs> video about integral control so that uh, we go step by step.